Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be an updated keep only 10 or if I could only keep 10 perfumes out of my entire collection, these would be the 10 I would keep. I like to do this every few months because it's just kind of fun for me personally just to see how my perfume tastes are changing and if I have any new favorites. And I know that you guys really like these kind of videos as well. I love watching people's top 10 perfume videos. So yeah, so a couple of little disclaimers. Um, obviously I left out some perfumes that I absolutely love. It is actually really, really difficult to choose only 10 perfumes out of your entire collection. I don't know if you've ever tried doing that, but it's pretty easy for like the first five because you kind of know what your top five like go-tos are. But then after that, it gets really, really difficult. And the other disclaimer is that this can change. Obviously, our tastes change over time and this might not be my 10 for life in six months or a year from now, it might be a little bit different. There are some oldies but goodies in here, but there's definitely a couple of new ones that you haven't seen. And if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia and on this channel, we do talk a lot about perfume. So if that is your thing, I would love if you would consider heading on down and hitting the subscribe button. Also feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram. And with that out of the way, let's get started in today's top 10. Okay, so in no particular order, the first one is Armani C Intense. So this one I don't think has ever been on a top 10 perfume for life for me. This is one that I discovered last fall and it has become one of my favorite, favorite perfumes. Whenever I look at my collection and I'm tempted to declutter them and you know arrange them all on a tray and only keep a few perfumes, this is always the first one that jumps out at me. I don't know why. I do have other perfumes that are more like lifelong favorites but for some reason this one has just become such a favorite of mine and i'm absolutely obsessed with it so the notes that you have in here are black currant syrup turkish rose divana benzoin and patchouli and this is a sweet syrupy really sexy black currant fragrance oh my gosh this smells so good you guys this would be a beautiful perfume to wear on a date but this could also just be a signature scent i think it's a little bit more appropriate for cold weather so i haven't worn this one a lot in the last couple of months just because it has been getting a lot hotter and i just don't think it's really appropriate for like really hot spring and summer days but I am absolutely obsessed with it, you guys. And basically it smells very, very similar to the original C, the original C Eau de Parfum. But this one is stronger and it almost has a bit more of like an ambery component. Like it has this more resinous, deep, almost woody component to it. But it's very sweet. It's very sensual. I am, you guys, I am so, so obsessed with it. Like if I could describe myself in one perfume at the moment... I feel like this is it. This is everything I want to be. This is everything I want in a perfume. It's luxurious and sophisticated and pretty and feminine and classy and a little bit complex and it's just beautiful. And I really, really 10 out of 10 recommend this one. So this one for sure is on my top 10 favorite perfume and that is Armani C Intense. All right, so I may as well get this one out of the way because I think a lot of you knew this was gonna be in this video. There's actually quite a few, I think, fairly predictable ones in this video if you watch my channel. And this is Mon Guerlain Eau de Parfum from Guerlain. So this is a very, very popular perfume. I think it wasn't that popular a few years ago, but because of social media, it has become, I think, probably one of the most talked about like favorite social media perfumes that's out there. And this is a lavender vanilla scent primarily, but it's also powdery. There's also some jasmine. There's a little bit of bergamot in the opening, so it has a little bit of a fresh opening as well. There's also a lot of sandalwood, there's coumarin, there's benzoin, there's licorice, there's patchouli. So this also has a little bit of like a warm, woody spiciness to it. It's not just a lavender vanilla perfume. It's a little bit more complex than that. And first of all, I love the bottle. I mean, this bottle looks beautiful sitting on anybody's vanity. It's very like regal and classy looking. Sorry, you guys, the sun is going in and out of the clouds and it's playing games with my lighting. This is just a really beautiful, enjoyable, feminine scent. That's really the best way that I can put it. It's very feminine and I always enjoy wearing it. It's very soft and very comforting and it's probably my favorite lavender perfume of all time ever. Um, again, I think this one is a little bit more appropriate for those cooler months, so I do not wear this a lot in the spring and summer, although you totally could. I think it's fresh enough and light enough and airy enough that you could wear it on a warm summer day. And I just absolutely love it. I could easily make this a signature scent. I have way too many perfumes to choose a signature scent, but if I had to choose a signature scent, 
this would definitely be a contender because I just like wearing it all the time and it always works and it has even a little bit of a sexiness to it so it's not just like a plain Jane everyday perfume it does have a little bit of a sexiness to it as well all right so now for a Chanel and I think this is the only Chanel in today's video which is different for me usually I have a couple of Chanel's but I think I've really been discovering what works best for me and what scent profiles I really like and um, I've honed it down to this one this is one of my favorite Chanel perfumes and I figured I needed like a really nice everyday summer freshie that was appropriate for those hot days as well but still had some good lasting power so this is Chanel Gabriel Essence. This is my new favorite Chanel perfume and this is a citrusy floral musky fragrance so it sounds basically the same as all the other Chanel's <laughs> but it has citruses, peach, red fruits, black currant, pedigree, white flowers, tuberose, ylang ylang, jasmine, orange blossom, coconut, musk, vanilla, and sandalwood. So this is kind of a loaded a loaded little perfume it comes in a really beautiful bottle I always tell you guys this bottle looks super small for what it is it's a 50 ml but it looks really tiny and what I love about this perfume is it basically smells like sunshine in a bottle it smells like happy uplifting citrusy summertime fruity flowers still with a mature classy element to it so it still does smell like Chanel it's not like a basic fruity floral by any stretch of the imagination it's very very classy and this is an easy grab and go you can see there's quite a bit of a dent I bought this last summer I believe and then of course we had winter um, so I didn't wear it for quite a few months and I've pulled it out again and I just love it I just really enjoy wearing it and it's just kind of a foolproof fail safe grab and go for anytime anywhere when it's just a normal like day and you want to smell good and it does have that classy sophisticated touch I could easily have a large bottle of this and if I had to get rid of all my Chanel perfumes you guys and keep only a couple this would definitely be one of the ones I would keep maybe I'll do a video on that one day if I decluttered my Chanel's which ones would I keep um, but yeah this one I definitely recommend for people who are kind of tired of all the other Chanel's they're tired of Chance Au Tendre they're tired of Coco Mademoiselle they want something that's newer and more interesting and not everybody else is wearing it this one I honestly feel is still new enough that not everybody is wearing it but you still smell beautiful and if I had to compare it to something it would remind me a little bit of Chanel beige this one's a little bit more modern and has like a youthful component to it compared to Chanel beige but they're both really nice so if you like beige I think you would really like this one and vice versa so that is Chanel Gabrielle essence all right, let's get another predictable one out of the way because if you guys watch my videos, then you probably knew this was going to be in here. This is Alien from Mugler. Tiniest little bottle ever. I have not been burning through this, which is another motivator for me to want to declutter my collection because I'm not putting very many big dents in my bottles and this perfume deserves to be worn a lot more often than I do. Oh, I love this perfume so much. So this is a jasmine, amber, and woody note fragrance. So it's a very like sexy, seductive, sweet kind of a jasmine fragrance. To me, it has like a sweetness to it. It smells just like the bottle looks. It smells daring and different and a little provocative and purple, if that makes any sense. For some reason, I feel like it does smell purple. And I just love this perfume so much, you guys. And I feel like you can wear this perfume all year round. A lot of people think that Alien is only like a nighttime clubbing, going out, cooler weather. Honestly, I have worn this on like plus 25, 30 Celsius days. And I thought it was great. It smelled really nice. It was projecting. I got compliments when I wore it. Basically, this makes me feel really confident and seductive and feminine that's how i would describe this perfume confident seductive feminine even on a hot day oh, i love it so much you guys i every time i smell it i just get the same reaction it is so good and this is a perfume that i kind of went full circle with i actually hated this perfume when i first smelled it and to the point that i had to go wash it off i was so repulsed i thought what on earth is that that smells ridiculous like who would ever want to smell like that it was just so potent and then after i gave it a chance and actually wore it for like an evening and a date night then i understood how great this perfume is i just completely fell in love and now it's been in my top 10 for life ever since going on two years now so that is alien from mugler 
All right, now for another one that's a little bit newer to my collection, and this is Jo Malone Peony and Blush Suede. Again, this is a perfume that I haven't had it very long, similar to the Armani C Intense, but somehow it has jumped into my top like 10 favorite perfumes, at least of the moment. Of course, these choices can change over time in six months or a year. I don't know for sure if I would say the same thing, but I am absolutely loving this fragrance, you guys, and I honestly feel like I don't know what I ever did without it. It took me, again, a really long time to like this perfume. The Jo Malone perfumes in general, I didn't really like them very much at all. And for some reason, I'm really starting to like those softer, more refined, sort of effortless smelling perfumes that are a little bit more simple and a little bit more natural smelling. I don't know why, but I'm really, really starting to like those kind of fragrances. So this is Peony and Blush Suede. So you have notes of red apple, peony, rose, jasmine, carnation, and suede. And to be honest, I don't get a lot of the carnation or the jasmine a little bit of rose, but mostly what I get from this is the peony and the suede, which I guess is why they called it what they did. So this is just such a beautiful, fresh, effortless, everyday, classy perfume. It's very, very pretty. That would be the best way to describe it. It's just pretty, effortless, and fresh. So it's got that peony, which I absolutely love. Peony is one of my absolute favorite notes in a perfume. And then it has this beautiful, subtle, soft suede note. So it doesn't smell like leather or like leather car seats or harsh or strong or masculine or anything like that. It's a very soft, beautiful, pretty suede. And then it's balanced perfectly with this slightly sweet, like slightly fresh, fruity note of that red apple, which by the way, I'm not a huge fan of red apples. So if you guys are like me and you don't want to smell straight up like apples, because I certainly don't, the apple in here is very understated and very well balanced and it doesn't stick out or stand out to me. What I mostly get is that beautiful soft peony and this lovely soft feminine suede. And no, this perfume does not last very long. It's not one of my longest lasting perfumes, but it's also not the weakest perfume that I have. And I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy wearing this. So I have no problems with the performance on this at all. I absolutely love it. I don't mind spraying a little bit extra. Actually, I haven't been wearing it as much lately over the last couple of weeks because I've been trying other perfumes but this is definitely one of my top 10 favorite perfumes of the moment. All right, so let's get this one out of the way as well because I'm sure that if you guys watch my channel, you knew that this one was coming as well. This is Miss Dior Eau de Parfum, the 2017 formulation. Many of you know, or maybe you don't know, that they did reformulate this perfume in 2021, and the new version of this perfume is very, very different. It's a lot lighter, it's a lot softer, the lasting power is not the same, and it really doesn't smell anything like this perfume. It's now like a powdery soft vanilla. It's very pleasant. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a beautiful fragrance, but the lasting power is just abysmal. And for the price that you pay, especially compared to what Miss Dior used to be, in my opinion, there's no comparison. So I do have four backup bottles of this one, which I'm very, very grateful for because I love this perfume. I always say this is my favorite daytime scent for women ever, and it's a real shame that they did discontinue it. Um, this bottle's getting a little bit old, to be honest, you guys. The juice is getting a little dark. I have been trying to wear it more often. I actually wore it the last like two days this week, um, just in an effort to kind of try to use it up. The juice is eventually going to be to the point that I cannot wear it anymore. It already smells a little bit different compared to when I first got it but it still does smell very beautiful. So the notes that you have in here are pink pepper, blood orange, sweet orange, mandarin, calabrian bergamot, and lemon. You have grass rose, damask rose, jasmine leaf, patchouli, palisander rosewood. So this is just a really sophisticated, sweet, rosy patchouli fragrance. Lots of orange, lots of rose, lots of patchouli. That's pretty much what you get with this one. It does smell similar to Coco Mademoiselle, but this one is less clean and soapy. This one is not so fresh. It's definitely a lot sweeter compared to Coco Mademoiselle, but they are in a similar vein. I would say Coco Mademoiselle, this perfume, and Victor and Roth Flower Bomb are all kind of in the same like ballpark. They're all sisters, but they're different. This is a really classy, elegant, sweet, girly, beautiful fragrance that lasts forever, has good projection, and just can go for any occasion. You could wear this for a date, you could wear this as a signature scent, um, but I absolutely love it. And I actually wore this to the gym the other day and I just didn't go too heavy. I sprayed one spray on the inside of each elbow and it was really nice, it was projecting really nicely. And the dry down of this, you guys, is so heavenly. It's so sweet 
and still very classy and very elegant and it's just amazing and I'm really really sad that they discontinued it because honestly like I know that this bottle is getting old and I want to smell like the new bottle I, I always want to have a new fresh bottle um, and I know that eventually I'm not going to be able to have a new fresh bottle so yeah, so that's my Miss Dior 2017. Okay, so now for a vanilla perfume. I think everybody needs a really good vanilla perfume in their perfume collection, and this is my favorite vanilla probably of all time, including Spiritus Double Vanille. I still think I prefer this one even a little better. So this is gonna make me sound very basic and very like cliche, but this is one of the best vanillas I think you can find, and I love it. So Kaoli Vanilla 28. So this isn't even like a straight up vanilla perfume. This is actually more of an orchid brown sugar ambery perfume so I always hear people describe this as like a straight up like vanilla extract I don't really get like straight up vanilla what I think makes this perfume so special is that it is more of that like sweet brown sugar and it has this beautiful feminine floral touch that comes from that vanilla orchid which is amazing I love vanilla orchid in a perfume and then there's also this like ambery amber wood sort of earthy component to it as well it also has a little bit of jasmine and tonka bean, and it has a little bit of musk. Oh my gosh, this is truly one of the most delicious, beautiful perfumes ever, ever, ever. I love it so much. Longevity is moderate to long, depending on how much you spray and how moisturized your skin is and the weather and all of that kind of stuff. Some days I find I get a few hours, other days I find it lasts me literally all day. I have gotten compliments on this one. This is another perfume that I have backups of. I love it so much. Oh my gosh, it is so good, you guys. And it's also a more affordable vanilla. There's a lot of other vanilla perfumes out there, niche vanillas that are a lot more expensive. This one's fairly affordable and Oh, I just cannot recommend it enough. I love it so much, you guys. I do wear this one more for fall and winter again, although I think you can wear this year round. I think you can wear any perfume year round. If you wanna wear it, just wear it. Don't worry about the weather, just wear what you wanna wear. So yeah, so this is Kaoli Vanilla 28, my vanilla perfume of choice. I think there's one more vanilla in today's video. Okay, so I also needed something that was irresistible, sexy, seductive, fun, flirty, sweet, and I decided to go with Brazilian Crush Shirosa 62. I very could have easily gone with, I very, I very could have easily, I very easily could have gone with Gold Couture from Viva La Juicy or Juicy Couture. That one is my boyfriend's favorite perfume on me. It's also a caramel scent. It actually smells very, very similar to this one, so I always find it interesting when people knock gold couture but they say they love this one because literally they could be twin sisters they are so similar but this one is the one I decided to go with because it's a little newer to my collection and I am truly obsessed obsessed with the way this smells I love it so much I have it in the body spray form and I also have it in the lotion form and I also have it in the perfume form <laughs> because that's how much I love them and you can mix and match all of them you can wear them all together you can even spray this with other fragrances from the line they all layer really nicely together and the one that I like to layer this one with is the Shirosa 39 the coconut one those two mixed together you guys are absolute heaven especially the lotions layer the cocoa cabana and the boom boom cream together it's incredible and thank me later <laughs> so this is a pistachio almond caramel vanilla fragrance it also has salt it has a couple of floral notes in it that aren't really strong it has sandalwood and oh, this is just one of the most yummy delicious irresistible fragrances Ever. I think those are the three words I would use to describe it. Yummy, delicious, irresistible. And that's what makes this good for a date night. That's what makes it good for anytime you're going to be closer to somebody or you really want to smell good enough to eat. And I'm not huge on gourmand perfumes. I don't love a lot of gourmand perfumes that literally make me smell edible. I don't want to walk around smelling like a cupcake or a cookie or something like that. To me, that's not sexy, that's just like food. This though, is that edible, yummy scent that also is ridiculously sexy, like you cannot go wrong with it. It's also very, very affordable. So this is the small size body spray and I think it's like $25 or something like that and then you can get a large one also that's pretty affordable. 
Um, by the way, I will link all of these perfumes down below for you, but this one you just can't go wrong. I wear this to the gym sometimes. I usually wear this for like date nights and intimate nights with my partner when I know that we're gonna be getting a little bit closer together because he goes crazy for this scent and it just makes me feel super sexy and I love it. So that is the uh, Brazilian Crush Chirosa 62. All right, time to get another oldie but goodie out of the way because you guys know, if you know, you know. This is one of my favorite perfumes of all time. It's right up there for me with Alien and Miss Dior and a couple of my other favorite scents. And this is Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. So what I love about Flower Bomb is that it, even though it's very recognizable and popular and so many people have it and it's kind of like overdone at this time and almost even a little dated, some would say, I just think that it is a foolproof perfume and you can not go wrong with it. It ticks off all the boxes for me. It's sweet, it's sexy, it's feminine, it's signature scent worthy, it's long lasting. Um, it's just an incredible scent. It's one of the best designer scents I think probably ever created. So this is actually a tea scent. So it has tea, bergamot, osmanthus, which kind of gives off like an apricot-y vibe. It also has orchid, again, one of my favorite feminine, beautiful, pink smelling floral notes in a perfume. Jasmine, rose, freesia, African orange flower, a heavy dose of patchouli, although I don't get a ton of patchouli in here if I'm being really honest. I think it's so sweet that the patchouli is kind of just like I don't know it's like there in the background but it doesn't bother me at all and then you have musk and vanilla so this one is again similar to Miss Dior in a sense but remove all the orangey notes and replace it with a few more sort of fresh floral notes and some tea it's a little bit fresher um, they don't smell the same by the way they're just kind of like in the same family and I don't know honestly all the notes that are in here I don't pick out like any of the notes I think Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb is just its own entity I don't pick out really tea in here I don't really pick out orchid I don't really pick out patchouli it's just a delicious beautiful sweet feminine scent and I'm obsessed with it I'm absolutely obsessed it's sweet like candy like it's sweet enough that it could be like a candy perfume and this is obviously my favorite out of all the Flower Bomb perfumes including nectar and um, Ruby Orchid I think is the other one that came out although I like Ruby Orchid but Ruby Orchid is a little too sweet for me but this one you guys I just love and I have so many good memories with this one my boyfriend loves it you could wear this for a date night I actually wore this as my sole fragrance when I first met him this was the perfume that I wore every single time we had a date when we were first dating um, so I have a lot of really really nice fun memories like older memories and I just love this fragrance so much yeah, I'm obsessed. I will always have Flower Bomb in my collection. <laughs> and finally, my last fragrance in my top 10, if I could only keep 10 perfumes, would be Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge. Actually, this was probably the first one I grabbed or maybe the second one. It's definitely one of my favorite perfumes. Again, expensive, but worth every penny. It was a blind buy. It was one of my best, most successful blind buys in history. I'm obsessed. So I did take the lid off because a, it's a really tall bottle, and B, it's a very, very heavy bottle. Even without the lid, it's extremely heavy. And this, I think, is a 90 mil, 90 mil bottle. It's quite heavy. And then the cap, I always call it a lid. I'm never going to quit calling it a lid. But this is the cap. So it's like a little globe, and then it has the little Louboutin shoe on the top, the little red bottom shoe. And this thing is heavy and sharp. So this is a vanilla iris cardamom fragrance. So it's powdery, it's a touch woody, it's got lots of vanilla in it. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is one of the most beautiful, absolutely beautiful perfumes. And every single person that I ask what they think of this, everyone from my boyfriend who went absolutely crazy for it, he said it was one of the sexiest perfumes he's ever smelled, to my friends and family, even my daughter, loves this perfume. Everybody loves this perfume, you guys. I can't imagine somebody getting this and not liking it. Yes, it's expensive, but it's worth it. It has decent longevity, not monster longevity, but it's not weak. Um, I would say I get like a few hours for sure and longer on clothing. Um, and I don't mind spraying a little bit heavier with this one because I like to, I really want to smell like this. Like when I want to wear this, I really want to wear this. It is a little bit closer. I would say it projects within about an arm's, arm's length away, maybe a little bit further. If you walk by somebody, they're definitely going to smell you, but it doesn't fill a room if that helps. And you can see that there is a little bit missing there. There's about probably 15 mils or so missing. 
I just can I cannot get enough of this perfume you guys this is so oh, it's so beautiful it's so beautiful and so feminine and luxurious and I would describe this as luxurious sexy and bougie those are probably the three words that come to mind very bougie makes me feel rich makes me feel like a million bucks and the description that they have online is that this is supposed to invoke feelings of high heels and a cabaret so very very sexy very feminine very alluring perfect for Louboutin which I'm a huge fan of the branding I'm a huge fan of Louboutin heels this is the perfect perfume to go with your Louboutin heels very very good for a date night and you could wear this for and you could just wear this for like evenings out um, I actually brought this with me on vacation last year and I wore it every day on vacation and it was perfect you guys it just made me feel so luxurious and I just loved it and I'm probably gonna do the same thing again <laughs> next time I go on vacation I think I'll bring this because it just suits the occasion so well and I can't get enough so yeah oh, you guys sometimes I actually do just want to declutter my collection and just choose you know 10 or 15 and be done with it this is one of those perfumes like yeah, this is one of those perfumes. So again, I will have everything linked down below for you guys. Honestly, I think this is a great gift idea. This is a very safe blind purchase. If you like vanilla, if you like a little bit of a powdery component and something truly unique that you haven't smelled before, check out Luby Rouge. So that was it, you guys. Those are my 10 kind of top perfumes of the moment. A lot of these have been favorites since the very beginning and have never left. A couple of them are new. And of course, I did leave out a ton of perfumes. Like I said, you guys, I have a lot of other perfumes in my collection that are favorites as well. I mean, I love so many of them. How do you truly choose only 10? It was very difficult. I would say the first eight were pretty easy to choose. And then after that, it got difficult and after that forget about it then they all just kind of are really good and I want all of them so honestly it would be very very difficult for me to actually call them down and only keep 10 it would be really hard because I am missing some perfumes here that I am in love with but I think this is pretty good and this is kind of like me in a perfume nutshell it just has a little bit of everything and uh, I 100% recommend all of these some of them are a little bit more polarizing definitely don't blind buy alien probably don't blind buy Armani CN 10 so I just think that one's a little bit too different and strong but I think a lot of these are actually um, pretty safe pretty likable and pretty mass pleasing so yeah so that is my top 10 perfumes for life let me know down below you guys what are your top 10 maybe you don't have 10 what's your top two three or five favorite perfumes for life and thank you so much for watching so that was it for today's video you guys i hope that you really enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these fragrances and like i said please let me know down below if you have a top three or two or five or whatever it is for you whatever your magic number is let me know what your top fragrances that you always would want for the rest of your life are and i look forward to reading all of your comments if you enjoyed today's video please give it a big like and i will see you all in my next one